It's more important than ever we support each other as a community. And while many things have been put on hold, we still need to keep going. Right now at Crown Toyota, we have great deals to help your family stay on the road. But if you have to wait, we'll be around when you need us, like we always have been and always will be. Crown Toyota, driving forward. Get 0% for up to 60 months or 1,000 cash back on a 2020 Camry hybrid model or the first ever Corolla hybrid. Crown Toyota, 3400 South Iowa, Lawrence, Kansas. Welcome to the last and final uh, edition of Self Perspective. We've gone through a lot of games and I think we've done, you know, eight or 10 so far. And a trip down memory lane has been really good for me uh, uh, and to watch these ex players play and and uh, the efforts, the great efforts that they gave all of us has been pretty special. Our last episode is going to be a game, to be honest with you, I don't remember much. Uh, I, I, uh, I've gone back and I've watched the, the, this part of the episode, uh, but it's, it's, uh, it's a game in which kind of got lost in the shuffle. It's the 2012 semifinal game against Ohio State. And if you remember back when we went to the Final Four with the Thomas and Tyshawn-led team, uh, and Jeff Withy and, of course, Elijah and Travis. But, but we, we go back to the, the Final Four uh, uh, run, and we had come from well behind against Purdue. Uh, we played NC State in the Sweet 16 in a game in which we made three shots total outside of three feet. We played North Carolina in the Elite Eight game, uh, uh, the next game. Of course, they were missing a point guard, their point guard, Kendall Marshall, but they were the number one ranked team in the country. And we dominated them on the glass and pulled away late. I think we, I think we go on a uh, 12 or 13 point run in the last uh, uh, 10 or a dozen minutes. So, so pulled away late and kind of won that game going away. And we get to the final four and, and, and even though we're a two C, we're kind of like the uninvited guest. And, and we play Jared Sullinger, Sullinger and a great uh, uh, Ohio State team. Uh, terrific team. William Bu- Buford they had a really good game against us, and of course Aaron Kraft was their point guard. They had, they had a terrific team, and and we didn't play well at all. And I remember the game the day before this game, and my staff would remember this too. We practiced at the University of New Orleans, and I remember Coach Hurley and other uh, uh, coaches uh, coming to our practice that day. And I promise you, we didn't miss a shot. We were the best team in America by far that day, on a day that didn't matter. We were almost perfect in everything that we did that day. And so we were sky high with confidence going into this game. And we'd beaten Ohio State early in the year. And we'd beaten them the year before when, when Ben was around at their place. So we were 2-0 and against Ohio State. We were, we were sky high. We were confident. And we go into this game and we lay an egg the first half. I believe we're down by as many as 13. We get a, a very important steal in a basket, I believe to end the half, to cut it to 9 or 10 or something like that. And I remember him interviewing me after the game. I said, well, we've been here before. This is kind of how we operate. And certainly uh, that that 9 or 10 becomes uh, anyone's ball game about midway through the second half. So we're going to pick it up with about 10 minutes left. And and uh, Ohio State owns a 46 to 42 lead on us. I don't know if you remember, Aaron Kraft, the terrific point guard, terrific. I want you guys to watch this. This is something that we always struggle with Thomas with, with his free throws. And if, and if, you, if you watch, everything looks good, but he's very, very stiff with his knees. And watch how he extends right there and becomes locked leg before his free throw shoots. So now his free throw is all arms. And even though he shot 70% of the year, you know, I think potentially he could have been a 80 or 85% free throw shooter, which would add another point to his average a game. But he was so good that entire year, but that was one area where I think he could have probably done a better job. And you can see that was all arms. That one's the exact same way, and he shot so many of them that way that obviously he still shot a decent percentage. Yeah, we only shot four free throws in this game. I want you to watch right here. This, this is the difference in today's game and back then. So Ohio State's playing with two traditional bigs. They're staying, playing with number 30. I believe his name is Ravino, And they're playing, obviously, with their All-American uh, 
uh, Jared Sullinger, number zero. I want you to watch how crowded the floor is. Aaron Kraft's not a great shooter, great point guard, not a great shooter. But here we go. We go. Jeff flat hedges the ball screen. Look at Tyshawn and strong help. There's nowhere for Buford to go. All right. Look where Thomas is. He's not even worried about Ravino because he knows he's not going to step off and shoot it. He's a low block player. And of course, uh, uh, Connor is kind of protecting the basket as his man runs underneath. I mean, that, that is a crowded house. So, so everybody gets back to their man. Same exact thing. But it, it is a, it, that is a hard world to try to penetrate right there. And what they end up doing is shooting a three. Great block out by Jeff, and then Thomas goes and gets it. But, but if, if you think about today's time, the way the game has changed is everybody's got four shooters on the floor playing four guards. So that court is so much more spread than what it even was in this particular game eight years ago. Here's Thomas coming out with the rebound. Got to put it between his legs to show everybody he can handle and then just throw it back out. That was a, that was a common theme whenever t Rob had the ball on the break. People forget, there's Jeff. Who, who, Jeff wasn't great and good in the NCAA tournament. He was great. And, of course, he made a bad play there. But what a, what a, what a year Jeff had for us. See, right there. This is something. When you, we call this a free double almost. So right there, the ball goes to Sullinger. We trap him. Tyshawn covers down on Ravino, so there's no easy basket. But the pass that we give open is the longest and furthest away. So we're going to try to take it. Travis does a great job of denying the strong side out. That's Buford. And then I believe it's number 32. I believe his name is Smith is at the top. So Connor does a good enough job to guard Smith. Though He throws it out to him. He's outside the scoring area. And then when they skip it to Kraft, who is probably their worst three point perimeter three-point shooter, Connor bides time, bluff, get back to his man, nobody hurt. And that, that, that right, we call that kind of a free double. Right there, Thomas heads the ball screen pretty good. Kraft comes off, but we're able to recover and force him to take a, a, a hard shot, and he made it. That was a big-time play by Buford. He played very well in this game. We're playing too big, so it's a crowded house as well. This is something that's very, very simple. And, of course, I'm just seeing this for the first time. Watch right. When Jeff sets the ball screen, and even though Connor is not going to come off that ball screen probably and make a lot happen off the bounce, when Jeff sets the ball screen, watch his man number 30, Ravino. Even though he doesn't hard hedge it because he knows he doesn't have to with Connor right there, and that's not a knock to Connor, but that wasn't his game, it makes gets him away from the basket. So this is a way that you can play with two bigs and always still isolate the post is because the guy setting the ball screen, this man, should get out of the play so it takes away the double on the post. And look what happened here. And that's been the case tonight. Soldier gambles and misses. They foul him, and but Thomas had an uncontested layup. That was good execution by us. He was amazing. Just took over that game offensively. That is T. Here's something that 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 is very very. It, it, it's. I don't, know if, I don't know if they made a mistake, but we, we, we do a good job on out-of-bounds under. We, we've historically done a decent job with this. But Connor sets a screen for Thomas. That's all fluff. That doesn't mean anything. But watch how Connor's man respects Thomas so much that he helped. Now, the way that Ohio State guards this, and, of course, this is, a, this is common with, with many, is the guy guarding the ball, which is Aaron Kraft right now, he doesn't even care about Tyshawn. He just, he just playing a one-man zone. And then if Thomas breaks open, his job is to go take Thomas to make sure Tyshawn can't make the pass. But what they did, they double-guarded it. They had Aaron respect Thomas coming off, but the whole thing is Smith got, got pushed back and respected Thomas as well. So they had two guys plus Selinger respect Thomas. And watch what happens now with with uh, Connor. 32 makes a bad decision. He goes under right there, and at least Jeff sets a good screen. It leaves Connor wide open. They overhelped on that, and that gave us a wide open look. And of course, Connor nailed it. God, he played great that year. What? And, and, and you know, I, I could, last edition, you know, looking back at these special guys, but how about T Han that, that came as a walk on? 
I, I don't know if he's in the same recruiting class as, as, uh, as Tyrell and Brady. I, th- I think he was with Tyrell, but redshirted, and Tyrell didn't, but he was a year ahead of Brady. And, and he was kind of the unsung hero of those three. And for him to hang in for four years, not for three, for four years before he really had a chance to really contribute a lot, and then he got his chance, and what a senior year he had for us. Kansas title team, and that's the first bench points tonight from either team. Travis, is what a play. What's this play by Trav? Maybe the best play he made in his college career. And he made some good ones. But watch him. Buford's got 15. Didn't they just say that? And so Travis goes ball side of the stagger. Okay? And the reason he can go ball side of the stagger here and not be a mistake is because the ball is on the weak side of the floor. If that ball was more centered right there, I would probably be upset with Trav because you got to piggyback that because if, if it's centered, the pass is short enough that he could bump and fade. Here the pass is too far for him to bump and fade, and so Buford curls it, and then Travis is able to run through it right there, outside hand, great defense. And then, and then what a move by Trav. Great by Trav. We got a ball game here, folks, with seven left. Thad calls timeout. You know, of course, Thad's retired now, but he he uh, did an unbelievable job at Ohio State. Took him to two Final Fours, had success in the league. Great guy too. And Kraft out to Sullinger, jump shot long. Pretty good. Make them play. Make them play to something that they probably didn't really want. So important in this game against Withy hasn't been able to get it going. Once again, five man sets a ball screen. Here we go. We're going to watch uh, Sullinger misses. Ty gets it. Should have been probably running quicker than that, Ty, playing too slow. Jeff sets a good ball screen. Sullinger just does an average job. But this, this, we got unlucky here and they got lucky. Okay. Kraft's a terrific defender, but Jeff nails him. He does a good job. And watch Tyshawn force Sullinger to him. And I'll be daggum. Jeff's got the he's got the naked run to the rim and mistimes his jump right there. That should have been two points our way. They got lucky. To take the lead for the first time since the opening seconds. Buford. Here's a great example. We are guilty of this all the time. And I bet you Thad's saying the same thing. Buford is hot, okay? But watch 32. He runs to the ball. Tyshawn's beat. He tries to jump the ball screen, and he and 32 runs to the ball. So guess what? Who guards him? His man. If 32 had been dead in the corner, their best offensive player this particular game gets a wide open three. So that that was we got lucky. We got they got lucky the last possession. We got lucky on that one. Good block off by Jeff. Somehow to score because Sullinger's not giving them one. Well, Thomas has been down since the 11:30 mark when he picked up his fourth. Okay, you guys should recognize this right here. They're icing the ball screens now, or down in it, which is really popular now, and this is how we guarded this year. Okay, so they're not going to let Travis come off middle. Okay, so that was something that they had talked about or made an adjustment. Actually, did a pretty good job. For the lead. Thomas finish that. Good shot, good screen by Jeff, and Thomas didn't finish. I think Sullinger got a hand on that one, Jim, from behind. Deep post position. There is Sullinger banking it in. That's yeah. when he's at his best. Not he's a good player. He's a load. Of course, he was a heavy body, and that's one thing that Jeff wasn't, a heavy body. Jeff was so good at blocking shots if he could stay away from your body. But he still got, I think, seven block shots in this game. He was great. Let's watch this. Now, Tyshawn Taylor, you guys all, he was third team All American. Okay? He, he was great. But good gosh, he could drive you nuts. Okay? Jeff, 
Jeff goes to shoot the ball. What's Tyshawn do? He stops and he's just watching. And Elijah too, just watching. What are they doing? Look at Tyshawn. Oh, it wasn't Elijah, it was Travis. Look at Tyshawn and Travis watch. Travis, we, we say this all the time, never challenge the ball in the backcourt. Never run up to challenge the ball in the backcourt where a guy can get behind your head. Never. What does Travis do right here? He runs up to try to challenge. I mean, these are, these are things that you learn the first week on campus. And Travis has been there for four years now, and Tyshawn's been there for four years. So as good as our team was, we still made some mistakes. And then, of course, Tyshawn tries to run back, but, but it's too late. Bad plays by two guys that were terrific and both great defenders. And it couldn't have come at a better time with points so difficult to come by right now. Everybody went to the offensive glass for Kansas. Robinson draws That's just, look at this greatly designed play, okay? Let's get the ball to Thomas and everybody else get out of his way. And Tyshawn just standing there like a bump on a log. I gotta, I need to call Ty after this, and we need to have a talk. <laughs> uh, uh, great move by Thomas. Locks his knees. Dad, gum it, T. Rob. Jeez. We used to talk to T. Rob about that all the time. Good job by, by Connor. Good job by Kevin fighting. Here's a prime example of us trying to protect Thomas. So who is their best player? Sullinger. Who do we put on him? Kevin. And then we're going to trap to try to get the ball out of his hands. Connor does an actually pretty good job, except Kevin's hands are low. Kevin and Thomas's hands are low. We, we, God, we made some mistakes. And so that opens, when his hands are low, that gives them vision to pass uh, across to the weak side. And Tyshawn takes away Kraft, does what he's supposed to do. Elijah takes away Smith at the top. But Connor, when he dives right there, uh, Reveno does a good job of hitting him, just like you're supposed to. They skip it, and the shot's wide open. The way that we should have guarded that, if anybody's interested, on the skip, first man take it. So that should have been Elijah going to 44, and then Connor run up to take Smith, make them make the extra pass, and we call that Xing out. But we didn't do that, and we just got lucky. Bad defense, and we just got lucky. And then Kevin gets his butt whipped on the weak side. Sollinger's a load. Icing the ball screen. Better ball movement. That's what he did. That's what he did. That was great. He's playing. God, what a year he had. I want you to watch this. This was a, I do remember this. I, I, and and, and th I was so discouraged on this because th that is our ball. Even, even, even though, even though Tyshawn deflected it, he deflected it right off Kraft's hands, and we're getting the call right there from the official underneath, and then an outside official overruled him. Great play by Kevin, but watch this terrible defense by Travis. See, see, Travis is guarding their best offensive player this game. He's got 17. Watch Buford how easily he pushes him off. Or, or, I mean, that is Trav. Trav, he wasn't ready. And so Kevin has to hedge the ball screen, throw it underneath, and then and Kevin just made an unbelievable individual play. Unbelievable. Big time play by Lai. Big time. Johnson 
This is right where, uh, if you remember this team, this is right where we wanted to be. We couldn't win pretty, but we could sure enough uh, win and we could come back. Kevin fouled him. Good job. Look at Kevin talking with his hands up. He should never do that. Great job by T-Rob. Great, great job by Thomas. Good job. Good call, too. Frustrating right here. Watch Elijah. Okay? God, we could have played so much better. But Elijah, look look what he does. He quits running. So, I mean, everybody else is booking it. And, and Elijah quits running, and the ball gets ahead of him. Elijah should be spaced all the way to the corner to stretch the defense. And if a man comes to him, he's obviously able for uh, – Tyshawn can see him for the pitch out. But Tyshawn can't see him there. He should have, he should have gotten down the floor. Tyshawn makes a good move. He just missed it. Thomas fights the rebound, and we get, a, we get the call there. That away, Thomas. Tar Heels were the best rebounding team in the country coming into that game, and Kansas took it to them. They're doing the same thing to Ohio State right now. 34 to 23 edge on the glass for the Jayhawks. It's been about the energy here in the second half from Kansas on the glass and defensively. Ohio State. Yeah, we're doing a we're doing a pretty good job defensively. The ability to execute late and make big plays, and they typically try to play through Sullinger here. Isn't this amazing? The difference in Aaron Kraft, great player. He didn't shoot it great. So watch Tyshawn here on the ball screen. He can go under. If that's, you know, a, a, a guy that, that, you know, you can't – Buford, for instance, we couldn't go under, he'll shoot that three. So that was a, a – you know, that was scouting report. Good job by Ty. Good D by Jeff. Look at this. Good job by Jeff. Elijah was really good at putting pressure on people. Thomas, you got to finish that. That was good offense. Get away. Okay, I, I want you guys to, this is so simple, okay? But watch, watch right here. Thomas, great rebound, out, boom. Tyshawn should be up the floor. He should be up the floor. He's not. He's being a little lazy. But watch what happens as soon as Tyshawn touches it. He pitches ahead. And so when he pitches ahead, it allowed numbers. If Tyshawn doesn't pitch ahead immediately, there's no numbers. And so watch this. Easy. Easy. And because of his misses, Deshaun Thomas going to need to run when they cleanly rebound. And there is Kansas in front. We buggied it up enough to take a, a one-point lead. First lead in a long time. Oh, where is the foul there? Oh my gosh. We'll have a chance to go to the line sent on the year. It just hasn't been. Sometimes though a guy who makes them both. It's a free throw. They'll try to get Thomas back into the game when Ohio State gets the ball back. I want you guys to watch this. Thomas back into the game. Down screen, Kraft does a good job getting through it. Elijah passes it to his inside hand. Good job by Kraft. Terrible by uh, uh, Elijah right here. And then he go, comes up and makes a good play. He's a he, he, good guard. We're down three. We're going to. We're going to get a good shot. 
Or maybe a guy's just going to make a play. I want you guys to watch this. This is not anything designed. But we use Thomas to set the ball screen, and Kraft jumps it. Remember we said they're down and they're icing the ball screens? Well, he jumps it. He's not going to let him go middle. Okay? But with that being said, that means Sullinger, number zero, needs to be able to cut it off if he drives right. And he's a little bit late right there, and Tyshawn's able to get all the way to about four feet and jump up over him. And that's just an unbelievable athletic play by Ty. Going under the ball screen outside the scoring area. That was good. Look at that. How about that play by Jeff, though? Wow. Jeff, great block. Tyshawn gets a loose ball. Good pitch ahead. Boy, Jeff Withy was good defensively. I don't know if you remember. He was the NABC National Defensive Player of the Year. National. And I think he had the most blocks ever in the history of the NCAA tournament in this particular year. We're up one. Down three to up one in 30 seconds. Switch the down screen. How about this? Jeff Withy. Wow. Now, we would say this all the time. Whenever a big man on the perimeter passes the ball to the post and he goes to score, a big guy should always run down there and try to clean it up or, or certainly uh, alter, if, if not block. And right there, Jeff was able to get there. And he had a layup, off balance though, and Jeff makes the block. And then look at Elijah. How about that? Big time play by Elijah. I mean, big time. Up three. And we play terrific defense here, if I'm not mistaken. Down, down three to up three in one minute. Go under the ball screen outside the area. And looky here. Perfect defense. And an unbelievable play by Kraft. Perfect play by, by uh, uh, Thomas New is a good play. How about, th how about this, though? I'll, I'll, I'll say this, and I, I say this with all lovingness towards Thomas, but Thomas wasn't our best individual defender now. But if you remember the Missouri game uh, uh, in, in, in the same year with the way that he blocked press, he shot at the end, the way he slid his feet on the very last possession in overtime, which made him make the extra pass. Uh, uh, and then you watch right here, he could guard anybody when he, when, he, when he was really, really, really turned up. Of course, we asked ask him to do so much. And so he's guarding Deshaun Thomas now, denying. Look at that. Reached with the correct hand. And that was a big time play. I also like this about this team. And it's been most of the teams that we had, most of the guys. They, they, I mean, it, it can't be a more competitive situation, okay? Well, this is for the right to play in the national championship game. If Kraft makes a good play. Watch Thomas right here. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Okay, we got time. Let's make sure we get a good one. And wow, this is an unbelievable call that we do not get. This would have been the ball game. I don't know if fans remember this, but I, I did after watching it. Oh, my goodness gracious. Oh, my goodness gracious. Game point. Maybe it was a good call because his feet did get kind of screwed up. 
Maybe, maybe it was good. Could have been an and one. Instead, we get nothing. And we think. Let's see. Well, that's a close one. That was a close one. So we're going to play good defense here. They're trying to shoot a three to tie. Good contest. Ah. Okay, now, if you guys all understood this, this is a prime example that, that Jeff is terrific. Don't get me wrong. But he played two straight up and down. And I think everybody would agree. He bent at the waist and not at the knee so much because he's seven foot tall. That's a natural thing to do. Watch what happens here when he goes for this loose ball. He bends with his waist and not his knees. So they get the rebound there. They miss again. And Buford gets a put back dunk. What a game. What a game. Ohio State fortunate. They were putting up threes faster than they had to. We're going to run. We just got to make sure we get it in. We get it in tie. One thing about Tyshawn, he may not make, he may make a mistake or he may miss a shot, but it's not going to be because he felt pressure. The dude loved it. He, 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 he lived for it. Going way back to his early high school days. Bingo. Money. And watch this play Ty makes after this. Okay, so, so we're going to sub out Jeff, I'm sure. Kevin is, and we're going to switch five, which means we're going to switch all handoffs and ball screens, okay, for us. I want you to watch the play that Tyshawn makes here. This is the play when I, when I said a while ago, he can make plays you can't coach, and he can make plays that looks like he's never been coached. And he was able to embody this all on this one possession. Unbelievable play. Watch this. A switch. Look at this play. Goes and steals it. Game over. Game's over. We stole the ball with 6.6 .6 left. The game is over. What a play. He read it right. He guessed. He guessed right. Game is over. Well, no, it's not quite over yet. So, so, but he made a great play. I mean, unbelievable play. And then he got a little carried away. Look at this. What a play. Mm -mm -mm. And then a really good job by us. We said we we're going to, in this situation, I told them if they throw the ball to Kraft, go ahead and foul him. And fortunately for us, Travis was able to foul him before he could get, his, before he get in the shooting motion. So that was, a, that was really, really good execution by us. He makes the first one. And watch the second one. We know he's going to miss it. We'll see if we're ready to play. Yeah. He did leave too soon. It was a lane violation. Watch. See, right there, he left too soon. The ball, I don't believe, hit the rim anyway. But it's kind of strange. Officials did us a favor here. And Ohio State was kind of talking about what they need to do or what are we doing or whatever it was. And uh, 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 the official underneath put the ball in play. We threw the ball in uncontested, and the game's over. And even, you know, that was an unbelievable win. And look at that. Student body going nuts. It's a terrific game by two terrific teams. I don't think we played our best, but certainly uh, uh, we played well enough, and it gave us the right to play uh, uh, Monday night against Kentucky in the national championship game, which is a very similar game as well. Certainly not a highlight for us, 
a game in which we got behind, I think, 15 or 17 uh, uh, and came back and cut it to four, I believe, and, and then just ran out of gas late. But, uh, but certainly uh, uh, what a win to put us in the, the right to play for a national title. This is the last installment of Self Perspective. I hope you enjoyed it. And when you go back and you, you think about uh, uh, some of these games, I think the first thing that I think about is how blessed we've all been to have so many good players uh, come through our program um, in the time in which we've been there, uh, been here over the last 17 years. And certainly uh, this last game is a great example of that Elijah, Travis, Tyshawn, Jeff, Thomas, Connor, Kevin. I mean, those were the only guys that played in this particular game. But, but uh, to see the, 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 how tough that team was and, and to see how basically we're coming off a year where we lost the, the Twins, uh, uh, where we lost uh, uh, Josh Selby, where we lost Tyrell, where we lost Brady. Uh, there were so many good players that we lost from the year before and for this team to come back the following year and go 32-7 and seven and have a chance to play for the – for, for it all is, is quite a tribute to them. So kudos to them and hope you've enjoyed.